Hi everybody, today we're going to be talking about the book of 1 John chapter 1 verses 5 through 7. The truth of the matter is we're not perfect. But scripture is. So, see it out yourself. And if we're wrong, finally tell us. Let's get started. Verse 5 says, This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Do this with me. Close your eyes and picture yourself in a dark room where you can't see anything. You don't know where you're going. You're tripping over things. You can't tell who's in the room with you or what's in the room with you. You're completely clueless. Now, suddenly, the lights switch on. Suddenly you can see where you're going, you know exactly where you are, you have no reason to stumble around because there is light and not darkness. We've all probably experienced this at some point in our lives, walking around in a dark room when we can't see where we're going or tripping over things, we're maybe holding on to the wall or holding on to things, just walking very slowly trying to make sure that we make it out okay and we don't mess things up too bad. This is a good illustration of what the scripture is talking about between light and darkness. There is freedom found in the light, freedom and knowledge. You know the truth, the truth is found in the light. And the light always wins out over darkness. Darkness never overwhelms light. Think about it. If you take a light and you bring it in a dark room, what happens? The darkness flees. The darkness doesn't overwhelm the light. It's like when you go outside on a sunny day and you have um, some sort of electronic device, maybe it's your phone or a camera, and you're trying to look at that device and you're trying to see the image on the screen and it's so sunny and that image has light in it. And it's hard to see. But you take that same light and don't adjust it don't make it brighter, don't make it dimmer, take that exact same light and you bring it into a dark room and what happens? The darkness does not overwhelm it, instead it actually makes the light appear brighter. So darkness never overwhelms light and in the same way darkness never overcomes God. God always wins out, God is always better than the darkness. Darkness represents everything that is bad everything sinful, everything of the devil, lying, cheating, sexual immorality, things that you'd want to hide because light exposes the things that are in the darkness, whereas darkness hides them. So people who are in sin want to live in the darkness and they want to hide. They don't want to come to God and have his light expose them. Light brings about righteousness and goodness and truth, holiness. God is light. So God is everything that is good, everything loving and kind and holy and right. That is who our God is. And it's important that you know that if you're going to be in fellowship with him. In this passage, John was telling the church this information so that they could have fellowship with God. In the previous passage that I discussed in my last video, I spoke about the introduction to this book and about how John is talking about Jesus. And now here, he's saying that this is the message that he has heard from him. So this is the message from Jesus. And not only that, but it is about Jesus. It's about God. The Godhead, three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That is our God and He is light. He is everything that is good and right and true. Having an understanding of who He is is an important part of being His child and being in close relationship with Him. The passage goes on to say that if we say we have fellowship with Him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. 
In other words, we can't say that we have a close relationship with God while we're walking in sin. We could say it, but it wouldn't be true. We would be lying. Because those who do have a close relationship with God will walk in the light. They will walk in obedience to God, living out His commandments, loving like He loves, serving like He serves, being pure and righteous. And I'm not talking self-righteousness, but actually doing the right thing. People who are in a close relationship with God will tend towards the things of God. It's kind of like when you're in a really close relationship with a friend, or maybe you are just spending a lot of time with your coworkers or your classmates, and you start to act like them. You start to say phrases that they say, you start to have attitudes that they have, because you're just so used to that coming into your life. Maybe they say that phrase every day or once a week, and you start in including it into your vocabulary, just kind of naturally. In the same way, the more time that we spend with God, the more that we are going to behave like God, the more that we will become like God. And when I say that, don't get me wrong, I don't mean that we're going to become a God. Because only God is God. He is the only God. And there are preachers out there who will tell you that you can become a God. And it is not true. It's not true any more than you actually becoming your friend or becoming your coworker or your classmate when you begin to act like them. You don't become them. You just become more like them. So those who are walking in the light, those who are living like God, are demonstrating that they do have a relationship with the Lord. If we, on the other hand, live a life in the darkness, hating other people, having outbursts of anger and foolish fighting and arguing, getting jealous, being bitter, maybe even giving in to fleshly desires like sexual sin and getting drunk, things of that sort, then we are not really in fellowship with God. We are living a life in the darkness if that is our average day, if that's our average lifestyle. So if we say that we live in the truth, that we live in the light and have fellowship with God while we're living in darkness, then we're just lying. It's like the person who says they know God, they say they know Jesus and they love him, but yet they're totally unwilling to follow his plans and his desires. They intentionally live with the person that they're dating and they sin on purpose. They plan ahead of time that they're going to sin and they don't care what God thinks. They say, well, God will forgive me. Or maybe it's not that situation. Maybe it's somebody who says they love Jesus yet again, but they love going out partying and drinking on the weekends. And it's not just that they slip up and get drunk. It's that they actually plan to do it. It's that that's part of their lifestyle. Maybe they have hatred in their heart for people and unforgiveness and God wants them to forgive but they are totally against it and rather than giving into what God wants they say um I'm just gonna spread some rumors and they start spreading these rumors around and they hate that other person while claiming to be a Christian. Now I don't know people's heart but God does. God knows your heart and if you're living a lifestyle that is in the darkness, if you're living your life in the darkness, then you do not have fellowship with God. If you're preferring to live in hiding, hiding what you do, know that one day God's light will expose it. The person who has fellowship with God lives in the light and they reflect love and joy and peace they're patient, they're kind. It's everything good and true. It will be reflected from that person. That person won't need to hide their actions because they're living in the light. So if you claim to be a Christian and you want to be a Christian and you want to follow God, then I'm going to tell you today to reject sin. Reject your sinful desires. Run away from it. Flee from it.
If you're holding bitterness in your heart and hatred towards people, bring it to God. Forgive them. If you're living a life where you're going out partying all the time, cut it out. Find some new friends. Find some new activities, something else to do. Now, Christians are not perfect. But Christians need to be living a lifestyle, living their lives according to the will of God, living in the light, spending time with Him. The passage says that if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus His Son cleanses us from all sin. If we're walking in the light, if we're living like God, then we have close relationships out of love with one another, with the people in the church, with other children of God. And if you look back to an earlier verse in this book, in the book of 1 John, you'll see that their fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. So if you're walking in the light, you can have fellowship with other believers, other children of God, and with God Himself. And not only that, but the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. We're going to get more in detail on that part in the next video. But know that if you make a mistake, if you sin, Jesus is standing there with open arms ready to forgive you. Don't reject him. Don't live your life in a way that you reject him constantly. Say, no, Jesus, I don't want to do what you want to do. Oh, but you'll forgive me later. Don't live like that. Strive to live for Christ. Strive to be in relationship with the Lord. But if you mess up, there's forgiveness for you and for me, for all of us because Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. So I encourage you, live in the light, reject the sin, reject the darkness, seek after God. God loves you so much. Let's pray. God, I thank you for your scripture. I thank you for the words that you have written to us. I thank you for your forgiveness of sin. I thank you that you walk in the light and that you show us who you are through your word. I pray for everybody who is watching, God, I pray that they would know the truth about you, that they would know who you really are, and I pray I would, I would do the same, that I would know who you really are. I pray that we would have fellowship with you and fellowship with one another. I pray that these words speak to the people who you want them to speak to. And you'd remind them as they go on their way, Lord. And me too, in Jesus' name.